Now, the clamor for minimum wage is something that is on the lips of almost all Nigerians because uh, minimum wage practically affects every segment, every sector of the economy, you know, and uh, we need to talk about it because uh, the elections are drawing close and um, a lot of people are saying that if it is not implemented right now, how certain are we uh, that uh, labor Nigerians are going to get uh, a living wage, a practical wage, you know, something that can actually give them food on your table. Joining us this morning to look at the clamor for minimum wage uh, with labor CSO holding nationwide protests. Uh, let me welcome Comrade Okono Abdullahi. Uh, he is um, the General Secretary of Texan. Many thanks for joining us on Galaxy today. Good morning to you. Good morning. It's good to have you. Uh, good morning. All right, let's, talk, let's talk minimum, minimum wage. wage. You know, it's <laughs> been like a recurring decimal since 2018. Back and forth negotiations, tripartite agreement, federal government, state government, and of course, labor. You know, state government are saying they can't pay. That's what we had sometime last year. But right now, what exactly is on ground? What are the issues right now? Thank you so much for having me. Uh, first and foremost, let me quickly just correct uh, the pronunciation of my name. Okay, my name no, is sorry, not brother. Okono. It is okay. Okono. Okono. Yes, okay. Okono. 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 So okay. that's the correct pronunciation. I'm sorry about so, that. Uh, no problem. Yeah. So on the issue of the minimum wage, um, like you rightly mentioned, it is what is in vogue, so to say, mm. in Nigeria today, everybody, virtually everybody is talking about it. Mm -hmm. And as I hear, yeah, as we are speaking now, we are on the field demonstrating and um, rallying, sensitizing people towards uh, the, the strike in case the government still does not do the needful, which is expected of it. And then, like you mentioned earlier, in 2018, the federal government, talking about the president himself, um, President Buhari, set up the committee to review the minimum wage. So, tripartite. People of the government were represented, federal government was represented, the organized labor, same as the employers association. So, but it will interest me to know that during the course of the work of this committee, the gov these same state governors that you said uh, have been claiming that they could not afford to pay the 30,000 uh, minimum wage never got represented. They did not as they were moving around the nation to deliberate with the state governments, okay, whatever you are saying you do, you can afford to pay, bring it up, let's negotiate, it. let's discuss about it. But they never got, uh, they never presented themselves for negotiation, not until the committee finished its work and uh, submitted to the, uh, to the federal government, that is uh, the president now, you know. Though it was also a talk of war, the antics of the federal government uh, about the, even the presentation. At the point when the committee finished its work, uh, the government was saying something else, saying that uh, the committee had to suspend its sitting indefinitely and the likes like that. Mm -hmm. But that one is yeah, that one is gone already now. So mm -hmm. the stage at which we are is a stage at which, having concluded its work, what is left for the federal government to do is to present the report of the committee to the National, National Assembly. Assembly. Because when you are talking about minimum wage, it is an act of the parliament. Yeah. So it has to be there for them to discuss and uh, deliberate upon it before they can uh, pass it to law. You understand? So that's the stage we are now. But the body language of the government indicates that they don't want to do this. Because what, is, what does it take for them to just present what is already with them to the, to the National Assembly. Okay, but we hear that um, some other states say that um, whatever is being placed for minimum wage is not, they are not sure they can afford it. Some state governors or some states, to uh, a large extent, say they cannot afford the current minimum wage um, that um, the federal government might want to impose on them. Why do you say in a situation like that, saying that, um, <coughs> excuse me, the revenues that um, come or each state, the amount of revenues they bring is not, um, you cannot compare. In a situation like that, what, 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 what will be your take? What's your opinion? 
Okay, thank you so much uh, for that question. I'm very sure I was so much convinced that a question like that is going to come up, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, we have been listening to them, we have been hearing them that they could not afford to pay. But the first thing I need to say is that, uh, as against what you said, it's not a case of imposition of something yeah. on another party, you understand? So that was why they said it's a tripartite a committee, okay. which, whereby state governors themselves needed to be represented. You understand? They were actually represented. When the committee was sitting, they never sent their own no representation, wonder. whatever their proposal. They didn't send it forward. Are you getting it? So whatever the amount they were claiming that they would be able to afford to pay, they never turned up to say that this is how much we'll be able to take. Having said that, the next thing is affordability. Can they afford to be paying it? The, the, right, the question is, I mean, the answer is very simple. There is no state in Nigeria today that cannot afford to pay the proposed minimum wage. How much are we talking about? Just 30,000 naira. When you convert the 30,000 naira to, to dollar, for instance, now, you see how, how small it is. Like they say, minimum wage is suppo supposed to be one that will take you home. And I tell you that even 30,000 naira cannot take anybody to the bus stop, not to talk of taking the person home. What the problem we what the problem is in Nigeria today is not necessarily lack of resources. What the problem is, is paucity of leadership. That is the problem we have today. You see that all these states they have, that are clamoring that they will not be able to afford to pay the 30,000 Naira minimum wage. All these states, check them. You see that the have, permit me to use the word, lazy governors that are not ready to put on their thinking cap to generate revenues for their state. The only thing they are waiting for is to go to Abuja every month end to see, to share from the cake or, and the national cake. There are instances about if you have leaders that are ready to think, that know their onions, they will look inward internally and start generating revenue. I can give an instance. There was a point in time, some years back, where a sitting president, for whatever reasons, blocked internal, I mean, revenue coming to a particular state. I don't want to mention him so that it will not be as if this is an uh, electionary period. They will not say, perhaps I'm speaking for a particular party or the other. That's why I'm, I'm trying to shy away from mentioning names and uh, the states. So what, does, what did the state do? The state damned the consequences, say, okay, whatever, hold it. And the state looked inward, and as we speak today, because of the effort of the, the state then, the, the governments in that state then, today as we speak, that state has the largest revenue, internally revenue, generated revenue in the law of the nation. So if you have governors like that, that are ready to put on their thinking cap, I tell you that there is no state, I repeat, there is no state that cannot afford the 30,000 naira okay. minimum wage. Another important thing, sorry, yeah. before you cut in, yeah. is that do we really need to consider, even at this point, the, what do you call it, resources of each of the, of the states? Mm -hmm. They will bring up such an argument, which we feel is not tenable. How do I mean? These are governors that, irrespective of the state they come from, or irrespective of what they are generating, the resources they are I mean, producing in their various states, they earn the same salary accord board. A state that is claiming that they cannot afford to pay salary. The governor for once never said that because the resources coming from my state is not enough compared to others, meaning the, what I will be earning, she also do what? She also go down. They never said that. Then, the, apart from that, again, you look at what these political leaders are hanging. Mm. Are you getting it? You see serious wastage. Several number of, uh, what do you call it, uh, political appointees. Eight. These are places whereby they, they expended unjudiciously the revenues of their various states. If, if they are able to know that, okay, they get their priorities right, 
You don't need the excesses of a uh, number of, uh, what do you call it, of uh, eight. You, you reduce the number. I, in, this, in this country we have, we know of a state or several states that political appointees are running up to a thousand. Why do we need that? Okay, then, fine. fine. Okay. So, talking about um, you know, all of that now, let's look about the <laughs> actions of labor in recent times. You know, last year, uh, there was um, a warning strike for a bit. You know, right now, labor and civil society organizations are on a protest nationwide. Just how far do you think this can go? Because after this, what next? Because it's as if uh, it's the last time resort for labor to either go protesting or embark on strike. At the end of the day, after a few days, the strike is called, um, called off and um, you know it's back to the status quo. What would be different um, with this particular protest? Uh, thank you so much. It is quite unfortunate that we are in a country whereby uh, the government does not appreciate peaceful negotiation. There are a series of letters written by the, the movement to the government calling the attention to the need for us to have a new minimum wage in place. Like I said before, it is an act of parliament and it's to be reviewed, uh, if I'm not mistaken, every four or five years now. Mm -hmm. You understand? So a series of letters were written, but the government never felt it was necessary for it to react the way it should to all those uh, correspondences. Not until you do what? the threat of strike comes in. So yeah. as it is now, you realize that labor movements more or less cannot but issue as a threat and eventually, if there is any need for it, to embark on strike because that seems to be the only language that our leaders, our governors, our presidents, all of them like that, they understand. So to answer your question now, as we, we are hoping we are hoping that you do not lead to the strike. Are you getting it? The threat that we, the ultimatum has been given, the threat is in the air, everybody is aware of it. If they still not withstanding what we are doing today, they still do not transmit this, uh, the report of the committee to the, to the parliament, then we will not have any choice other than to embark on the strike. And I tell you, this time around, the strike is going to be far reaching until they do the needful before we will call off the strike. Okay, let's talk about, um, okay, now that you're talking, uh, let's talk about the liberals themselves now, putting the state into consideration. I just want us to reason, since we are now in the table of reasoning. If um, some states say they cannot um, afford that um, amount, but they, but I'm sure they must have given reasons why they cannot afford that amount. Yeah, we all say that 30,000 Naira is, how much is 30,000 Naira? Looking at it that, um, I don't know how loyal our liberals are when it comes to tax payment. And then looking at other fundings that the state may need, do you think that um, each state in Nigeria will be able to accommodate that amount, regardless of every other funding that the states might be needing? Uh, like I said earlier, as far as we are concerned, there is no state in Nigeria that cannot afford it. Regardless of every other thing the state is expected to handle. Regardless, they, if we use Lagos State for example, for okay. instance, the population in Lagos, so obviously Lagos workers would be more than um, maybe a state like, um, you know what I'm talking about now, sure. don't let me confess <clears> this. So if you're saying the place like Lagos should be able to pay 30,000 naira to each workers, we don't know how many workers they are in, and then we also know that Lagos is undergoing some kind of restructuring and the rest. Do you think that states can actually, seeing that the revenue that comes into that state, we don't know how much when you come to some states, depend solely on federal government. So in your own opinion, I'm not saying that it's wrong for labor or uh, the uh, labor this should, to contest. I'm only saying that. Do you think it's reasonable or do you think that the states are just being, um, probably being um, selfish, not wanting to be 30,000 a minimum wage? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I want to do, I mean, want to depart from your, your choice of word mm. uh, that is being selfish. I just feel they are, like I said before, they are not really getting their priorities right. right. That okay. is what is on ground. And uh, like you are trying to say, there's no way we can separate issues. Okay. I get in it. So the issue of uh, the talk about, regardless of what is on ground, there's no way we can, we will not give regard to yeah. things that are on ground. Mm. You mentioned Lagos State. 
Lagos, the population of Lagos State, no doubt, is higher than mm -hmm. if not every other state in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You understand? But you realize that the more the population, automatically the more the workers. Mm -hmm. And the lower the population, the lower the workers. So what are we talking about? Mm -hmm. I get in it. So if, for instance, like I mentioned before, how, why on earth will a state, not even Lagos, Lagos state itself does not have that number of uh, large uh, political aids. That some, this, some of these states that are complaining that they cannot afford to pay, how can a state be having over 1,500 political aids? Are you getting it? Mm. And another important thing again is that all these governors, in recent times, you know, what they do is that they compel, so to, uh, quote and unquote, the, their various state house of assemblies to do what? To give themselves pension for life. Mm. Pension for life. That means if you are a governor, you spend only four years, you are to be paid pension for life. And in this pension, they are, giving, they are paying themselves or they are being paid, you realize that, for instance, let's say Lagos now, in the, in the act in Lagos, you, as, a, as a former governor, you have a house in Lagos, in your choice area, anywhere you want to. Mm -hmm. If it is by Nana Island, they will build it for you there. Likewise in Abuja. Then apart from that, again, you see that they are entitled to cars that, needs, that will be changed Maybe two, two years or three years. You understand? It was four. Apart from that, again, all their children, hmm, the state is showing the responsibility of tutoring them, taking uh, their education. And you know our leaders, all, no school in Nigeria is good for their children. They take them abroad. So wherever they take them to, it is the state that still pay. You understand? So when you look inward, look at all this frivolities, you put them, you cut them down, they'll be able to afford it. I get in it. There's no governor, there's no person that will become a governor that is not already a millionaire in Nigeria. That is a fact, if not even a billionaire. It's well to do, it doesn't need such. Somebody who has spent his, uh, spent 35 years of his life working, eh? you are, they struggle to get their pension. And somebody just spent four years or maximum of eight years, and you are giving such an individual so, so much largesse like that, you can see. But when we look, until we look inward and say enough is enough, and I think that is the next stage we should be looking at as a, as a movement now. Okay. We focus on all these issues such that we will compel them to revisit all these laws they enacted and make sure that the right things are done. When these things are done, then apart from that again, before I let go of that is that, like I said before, all these governors, they don't get their priority right. Mm. A state that is complaining that it cannot afford the 30,000 naira, such a state is a backing on building of airports. You understand? Mm. All these elephant projects like that, that are highly unnecessary for such states, they shouldn't be a backing on them. I, you understand my point? So if they don't embark on such early, uh, white elephant uh, projects, mm. they'll be able to afford to pay uh, so the Let's talk about the Lagos Congress. I mean, it, it, you're, it's known to be a place where once they demand for a particular thing and they're not giving the next thing a strike. Right? No, I'm not too sure I understand your point, I mean your question. Okay, what I'm saying is, the labor now is always like, if we have a demand, like this minimum wage thing now, and it's not being met, then the next thing is the labor goes on strike. Okay, okay. So what I'm trying to say is, um, instead of strike, is there no other way you think you can penetrate the heart of the government to listen to what you want? Actually, there are several tools that are at the disposal of the movement, mm. uh, the, uh, the workers, okay. to press on their demands. I get in it. Mm -hmm. And they talk about uh, the strike, the picketing, and the likes like that. Some of these things are not, uh, they are not so easy to embark on. So mm -hmm. people, when, they, when people talk, they talk as if it is a, is a tea party, something that is very, very easy. I tell you, to take decisions on things like that, it is not always easy. Mm -hmm. So to now try to address your point, we don't resort into all these actions 
until we are pushed to the wall. That's when we take all these actions. But when we are doing all those on the ground between our, our employers and ourselves, we don't go to town. When the negotiation or the discussion commences, I get in. When we are about to, when we are forced to the wall and uh, we are pushed to the wall and we are forced to take an action, that is when people now get to know. So mm -hmm. people then believe that every small thing you go on uh, on strike mm -hmm. and the likes like that. Okay. Take for example the issue of the minimum wage you are even talking about. Where did they start from? Uh, we started, okay, for instance, my labor center now started from 97,000 era before the three labor centers harmonized their position. Mm. So the current, this thing, before they now even agreed on the 30,000 30, era, I get in it. If it is everything strike, it would have been that the initial amount that everybody agreed on will be what we will be standing on that. So now. You understand? Well, we don't do okay, that. But in all of this, now looking at all of the issues, minimum wage, eventually when it, it is signed into law, what's the place, what's the position of the informal sector? Because right now, that's one of the issues a lot of people are talking about, that uh, basically it's people who are in the, you know, maybe civil service, organized by So what about those in the informal sector? How does it apply to them? How would they be affected? Uh, <clears throat> thank you so much for that question. And I want to start by saying that it will be ignorant of anybody to assume that there is no way it will have a, an impact yeah. on people in the informal sector, mm -hmm. like you just raised. Because, for instance, now, if somebody who was earning, uh, say, 18,000 euros as it is presently, monthly, is able to get 30,000 euros, that is an increment. That means his purchasing capacity will have to do what? Will increase. I get in it, and uh, wherever he goes to to get whatever he or she wants, mostly we deal with all these informal sectors. Take for instance the market women now. You can you, whatever you need, you cannot produce or provide. It, I mean, produce it yourself. You have to go there to get whatever you need. I get in it. When I go to the market, for example, if for instance now, well, how much I was spending on um, on feeding in a month was 5,000 Naira, for instance. Mm. So by the time my salary is increased from 18,000 Naira to 30,000 Naira, that means my, I will have to, my budget will also increase also. Mm. I get in it. So 5,000 Naira automatically may mm. even increase to about 15,000 Naira. So it is eventually also will be beneficial to those in the informal sector I think as there well. There won't be a hike in um, budgets of things and buying things. Inflation, you are trying yeah, to say. Inflation, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is very funny when people talk about that, that once you implement an increment in a minimum wage, it will bring about inflation. And I ask, where does that come from? It is not, it's not logical in the sense that all our lawmakers, for instance, you, everybody knows how much they, they collect now. As a matter of fact, they earn the highest in the whole of, in the world. Even they earn what is far better than what lawmakers in the U.S., for instance, are hanging, are getting it. And then when these people increase whatever they take home, people don't complain about uh, inflation. I get in it. Well, so why is it now that when workers themselves are the ones that want to get their lot better, that people now start talking about inflation? Like, I don't think uh, All right. it's logical. Okay, let us anymore. take some comments right now from viewers <laughs> watching. Uh, this one is from Dennis. He says, uh, please help me uh, tell government to pay workers the minimum wage. Uh, that's from Anthony here in Lagos. This one is from architect Dan Juma. My name is Mohammed Dan Juma from Niger State. Actually, you are saying the right thing because some of this governor spent so much on the traveling or traveling out of the country. All right. Um, Any more? Uh, Good morning. Uh, my stand is that labor should not agree with the government because the government is serious with the is not serious with the labor. How much is thirty thousand naira in a month? Let the labor start a nationwide strike. Most of our Jimmy from Iyeshiota in um, Ogun State. All right. Let's see if we can take one more uh, before we just uh, wrap up. Uh, good morning, uh, sir, and others in the studio. How are you sure Lagos? Is going to pay thirty thousand naira because already they are not paying eighteen thousand naira. How are you going to be monitoring this? Uh, thank you. All right. Uh, just before I let you go, in just a moment, just I want you to just 
sum it all up. So right now, you know, are we looking for? Uh, are we are you guys jarring Nigerians up for a strike? Uh, definitely, that's the essence of uh, today's uh, rally. Mm -hmm. You understand to sensitize people that are not aware of the essence of uh, the minimum wage to prepare people's mind towards uh, the strike. So, like I said before. The ball is not in our court, it's not in the court of the government. So whatever they do depends, I mean, determines what our next line of action is. If they don't do the needful, then the strike will become inevitable. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we've been looking at um, the clamor for minimum wage and um, the plight of Nigerian workers. And our guest has been the assistant uh, general secretary, rather, of um, the Texan that... Um, uh, the, the labor union for private, private telecoms and then communication senior staff association. All right, and that's as much as we can take. We must say a very big thank you to all of you who have, uh, you know, contributed to this program uh, for your SMSs and uh, your feedbacks and um, everything. We do appreciate it. Uh, let's give it a date tomorrow when we will be look at something also topical. We'll be focusing our attention on health. Also, to say a very big thank you to. A guest who joined us from Eve Badon, Bashta Remy Ali. And of course, also from our guest in Abuja, in person of Ifain, a Geo 4, a Lego practitioner as well. Thank you so much also to you who sat back to enjoy this program. We'll be back same time again tomorrow. I'm Uche Onyekunje. And I'm Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching. Bye for now.